How does your Australian superannuation fund impact the government age pension in Australia? Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Thanks for tuning into the video today. Today we are unpacking how your Australian superannuation fund can impact your ability or your eligibility to receive a government age pension down in Australia. Now, a number of Australian expats simply won't qualify for the Australian government pension given their asset base or the income that they will receive in retirement. But it's important not to ignore this because whilst it might not be something you receive in the early years of your retirement, as you get into the later years in your 70s, 80s and 90s, maybe having a part or full uh, government age pension in Australia does form part of your income needs over the long run. So let's have a look at how your superannuation actually impacts your eligibility, what tests apply and what you need to think about if you're planning to retire down in Australia. First and foremost, it's important to recognise that there are two stages when it comes to your superannuation and this dictates how or if it actually impacts your pension entitlement or not. So when your superannuation is in accumulation phase, that is the phase while we're working, we're contributing, the superannuation is growing and importantly we're paying tax within our superannuation fund. This is usually prior to the age of 60 where we haven't retired, we haven't met a condition of release and we still sit in accumulation phase. Now, under the current rules, whilst we are in accumulation phase, we can't simply tap into our super fund. We can't go and withdraw some money, transfer it to our bank account. It's there, it's locked away for our retirement and therefore it doesn't impact our entitlement to the Australian government age pension. But when we go into retirement or pension phase and we do meet that condition of release, we convert our superannuation into an account based pension. That's when it starts to impact our eligibility for the age pension from the government. So let's have a bit of a look at the two tests that apply, how our super will be treated and how the calculations actually work to determine its impact on our age pension entitlement. There are two key tests that apply when it comes to the calculation of our superannuation fund in pension mode and its impact on our age pension entitlement. The first of these is the income test. The second of these is the assets test. Now it's very important to recognize that the income test, so let's have a look at that one first, doesn't simply mean how much money did you withdraw from your superannuation fund each year? Because once you're in that pension mode, you could go in and withdraw 100% of it, or you could withdraw the bare minimum. So what, in, what applies instead are the deeming rules. Now what these deeming rules state is how much money you're assumed to have earned based on your superannuation balance in pension phase. Now these numbers will change year on year, so be sure to check the latest rates. But as it currently stands, the first $88,000 is deemed to earn a return of 0.25% per year. Beyond the 88,000, so 88,000 and $1 and beyond, is deemed to earn 2.25% as an annual return. Those numbers added together will give you the income that your superannuation is deemed to have earned to then apply the income test. So what you can quickly work out here is that even if your super fund in pension mode generates a return of five or 10 or even 25%, you're still only deemed to have earned the 2.25 and the 0.25%. So then we move to the income test to work out how it actually impacts our pension. So if we look at superannuation first, for couples, we can earn up to $360 per, for, uh, per fortnight and still be eligible for a full pension. This drops off by 20 cents for every dollar above that threshold we earn, all the way up to $3,725 for a couple who is living together. Now these figures will change between singles, between single homeowners and single renters, and couple homeowners, couple renters, couples living apart. So be sure to check your own scenario and what numbers apply to you. 
So that's a bit about the income test and how it works. Let's have a look at the other test, which is the assets test and how your superannuation applies here when it comes to the age pension. Now, when it comes to the assets test, as the name suggests, this is an accumulation of your assets above and beyond your own home. So your own home doesn't apply, but if you're a homeowner, you will have different thresholds to somebody who is not a homeowner when it comes to the assets test and your age pension entitlement. So once your superannuation, as I said earlier, is in pension phase, then the assets test applies. It forms part of your asset pool. So for homeowner couples, so couples who own their own home, living together, to receive a full age pension under the assets test, the asset base needs to be below $451,500. For non-homeowner couples, that amount is up to $693,500. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the income test, it differs between singles, couples, homeowners, non-homeowners, couples living separately. So make sure you visit the services website and check what limit actually applies to you. Now, it's important to note that whichever of these two tests gives you the lower age pension entitlement, that is what you receive. So in simple terms, whichever gives you the worst result, that is the test that will be applied. So what should we be doing with these assumptions? Should we simply go and spend all of our money or buy our own home? There is no one size fits all. It's just important to recognize that potentially a part pension may form part of your retirement income in your early years, or it may be something that you rely on later, later in your retirement as you draw down on that asset base. But of course, plan ahead, review these tests regularly, and make sure that you're not missing out on pension entitlements that could form part of your retirement income. Any questions at all, drop me a note. This is a complex area of financial advice, so be sure to reach out to your advisor, ask questions, and make sure you're receiving every dollar that you're eligible for.